Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. Thanks everybody for tuning in to another episode of Pastor Wire TV. A uh, great guest on this show, Jose D'Angelo, super nice guy. I think you will all enjoy uh, meeting him, getting to know him a little bit. We had some great Q&A. Uh, sit back, enjoy the show. Thanks for tuning in and uh, ciao for now. Gentlemen, here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator exclusively on DRF Bets. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Pass the Wire TV. Uh, we've got some one-on-one -on -one Q and A today with a, a an, an up-and-coming trainer at Gulfstream Park, Jose D'Angelo. That I am glad had the time to join us today. Um, he's already got some interesting things on his resume with a horse named Jesus Team, who we'll talk about in a little bit. But first, Jose, thank you so much for coming on the show. Pleasure to have you. Thank you, Leon, for inviting to your program. Uh, I am happy to, to be here. I, I, I appreciate you, you, you coming on. Uh, let's start with a little bit about you. You're a young guy, and you're definitely on a lot of people's radar as an up-and-coming trainer. Uh, you know, you... Thank you. Win at a pretty good clip at Gulfstream Park. You've, you, you know, had a horse that got some national attention in some big races that we'll talk to in a little bit, but... Uh, Tell me a little bit about you. How, how did you wind up coming to Florida? You're from Venezuela, correct? Yes, uh, I, I am coming from Venezuela. Uh, I, become, I come from a family like all our horsemen. My father was trainer there, um, here too. Uh, my uncles uh, own, and my grandfather uh, had a magazine, work for a, like one of the big magazine like DRF here. Okay. But there, uh, my uncle is a, one of the famous salesman horses on Venezuela. So when I was a, a child, always horse everywhere. Horse, okay. my vacations at the barn. So, you know, I love the horses, the, the, horse, the life with horses like trainer. Um, I, start, I was on the university in Venezuela. I studied in business. Almost finished my career there, but 
uh, I have a I have a conversation with my father. And I say, hey, hey, dad, I would like be a trainer or trainer. Right? Uh -huh. You know, I I promise that I'm gonna finish with the university, but the the horse can more than than the students. Right. Uh, like I get my license. 2020 uh, 2011 2012 I get my license and I start to to train by myself there did you ever wind up going back to school and finish now right hey almost finish almost <laughs> almost almost you don't believe me and I, I went to my classes and but one time I get like 170 horse there so was impossible, you know, have a lot of work there. The only good thing there is just from weekends, but all the week working at the barn until 9 p.m., you know, hard. Right, right. Uh, let me ask you this, I, you know, and, and I noticed it's, it's, it's kind of, there's a lot of trainers at Gulfstream Park from Venezuela. What made you decide to come? Did you always want to come to the United States? Did you just want to leave Venezuela? What, how, how'd you wind up at Gulfstream Park? My thing is like uh, the situation in Venezuela is not is not the best situation now. Okay, um, my plan was I training horses since there since 2012. I won the big race there, like the Kentucky Derby here there on 2014. Okay, and what I is was the big race there. What what is it? A classic estate or classical Simon Bolivar. Okay. okay. Um, after this year, always was second and the leading trainer. Okay, and um, you know I have like like I had like a goal. My personal goal was emulate my father because my father was champion there and was uh, in Venezuela. You receive a, a like the eclipse he, uh, here, but there like when you are like apprentice trainer. Okay, right. like coming up trainer. My father won there. I won the same title, but just need to to own a leading trainer there. So after won the leading trainer at uh, uh, 2018, I come on 2019. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I moved. You know, I like I did that. I did that. So now I I need to try me on the on the big leagues. So and see what happens. How do you like it so far? No, I I like a lot, a lot, yeah. a lot. When when I start when you know, I I need I know I knew something because I come on vacations and see my father working here. But when we go out with Jesus team to all the like all the tracks and all the big tracks, so hey, <laughs> I ha I have to be <laughs> stay here before. Now let me tell you, you know, we'll talk a little about Jesus team. Uh, you took over his training after he broke his maiden, correct? Yes. Uh, how did that happen? Just they decided to give you a shot? Hey, the, the owner had a big farm in Venezuela. And, okay. you know, I, I was here, young, worried about it. Just have like, in Venezuela, I had like 100, always 150, 140 horse. And just here with training two horses. So I finished my day like <laughs> 6 a.m., 7 a.m. So... He called me one day and said, hey, Jose, you can get for me some, some mares? For sure. Right. I, start, I start walking all palmeros and I get some, you know, retired fillies and mares and same with him and cheap. And he said, hey, Jose, you deserve a, a good opportunity with my horse. I'm going to move my horse to your van. Okay, thank you, sir. He sent to me these horses. When I received him, he, he come from Broke the Maiden for 25, for, right. from 30, 32,000. And he told me, hey, you can run the horse for 16,000 and win. Ah, okay. When I started working with him, John, with, with Jesus, normal horse, normal horse, I started to make some move, put the double reins, put the uh, figure eight, and uh, a shadow roll, and the horse started improving. And I said to him, hey, boss, I really like the horse. Can I put for 25,000? Because I, I wouldn't like to, to lose him. Yes, you can do that. <laughs> um, okay. I put the horse for 25. Um, I named Saez to, to row him. And 
I was at the paddock with my father. I said, I said to Luis, hey, Luis, he, co he just come to row from row maximum security at Saudi Arabia. Right. I said, Today he's going to run like maximum security there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he laughed and, and the horse won easy. You know, I, I got I got to tell you, he, he, he was a fascinating horse to watch. And I think I think you did a really good job with him. And you ran him very aggressively after that. I mean, you went right into the to the deep waters um, <laughs> and you, you you didn't win any of those big races. He did win the, the, the claiming crown jewel, but he was second in the Pegasus World Cup. Yeah. Huge race. Second in the Breeders' Cup. Huge race. What was it like? <laughs> taking a horse like that, um, you know, that you took over, I mean, in the, he, you, you took him to Dubai to run in the World Cup. You know, what What was competing on that world stage like? Hey, John, this horse gave to me one of the best moments in my life. So this horse is very special to me. Is When I saw him, I feel a lot of things like, it's like, you don't know you don't know where you are when you are doing that when you run the fitness when you run the breeders when you took an airplane and went to dubai and the pegasus World Cup. but like the next year and you see on the tv these races and you, and you say hey i was here <laughs> you say whoa you know was it, it was just hey you have to work harder to stay again there <laughs> and right. compete this level but this amazing it was amazing all this this experience what did the own did the owner ever say anything to you about about you know he tells you run the horse for 16 so we win and you know a couple of months later you're looking at grade ones all over the world run third in the preakness you know did he ever tell you like wow what what, what you know thank you yes oh he, <laughs> yes he was he was excited but was funny because after this this Hey, I, I know that the horse gonna gonna win this race, but never in the way that that he did. Okay, and right. I breeze him again, and he bring he breeze impressive, and he breeze. You know, here in USA, don't don't matter the times because you can claim a horse for six thousand two hundred fifty, and the horse can breeze better than a breeders' cup runner or whatever. Okay, okay. But the important thing here, like trainer for me, is always the gallop out okay of each horse and this day that this was breeze breeze at the same time this the law for from berkeley tack right well, what, what what is it about the gallop out that that you look for like if i'm watching a race for example okay. if you if you freeze your horse for furlongs you see you see and you took the time from the pole of the four furlongs until the finish line but the great horses, the good horses, they, they are still working. You know, um, they don't finish the, the work at the at the finish line. They 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 continue, okay, making the work. So when Jesus worked, he he was aggressive after after the finish line, like this alone, like the good horses. So I said, hey, I was here, you know, like with a small, really really a small van. I say, hey, I have to do something to 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 know people and, and and to go out. So I remember perfect. I, I went to the timekeeper there and he said I, on Palmeiras I say, hey, I have a horse to qualify to the Kentucky Derby. Can you explain to me where <laughs> where is the road? And he said, hey Jose, like looking at a crazy guy, hey Jose, yes, you can go to the bluegrass or you can go to the Haskell. Okay. And after I arrived to the van, I put that on Google. And I saw that on Momot, you run, you have like two shots because you have the Haskell um, um the Pegasus Invitational there. So I say, hey Jose, you know, your horses are, are rising, are, are improving. Maybe he, he's not gonna be that you think at the Haskell, but you have like a second opportunity. In Kingland, no. If you if we went to the to the bluegrass. So that's why I go, I I went to to Jersey and run the the Haskell and the Pegasus Invitational and the, uh, the horse make the points to run the Kentucky Derby, well, but we say not. Okay. Yes. Um, what? Why? Why didn't you run in the Derby? Just wasn't wasn't ready. Because I know that my horses are improving. 
Um, and you know, John, when you have horses, the some horses are good and some horses uh, have heart. Okay, when you have the mix of of these two conditions, you are you are Jesus is a horse with with big heart, big heart. You know, he don't have like like the quality for sure. He, he's a quality horse, but for me, he's just hard. You know, he he gave he gave uh, all that he can do on, on each race. So for after Rondi Haskell four against Authentic, uh, the horses start improving, improving. Um, I put on the Pegasus Invitational, and I like the horse to win. Okay, on this race, and the horse ran second. But if you see the video, he don't want go. You know, like he wants, but not once. So the owners call me like crazy. Yes, we are on the Kentucky Derby. I say, hey, well, sorry, but I think the Kentucky Derby is the race that all we want to run. But I think this race, you you have to run this race when you you know you have chance to win. No, no, just just for run, you know. Just run this race when when you can you can win. Um, our horse don't wanna win the Derby, and he. He was like serious. Why do you say that? Because I like the horse to win today and he not won. So let me put the blinkers. Maybe he needs something. And let's go to Saratoga to run the gym dandy and, and see how, how he improved with the blinkers. That's why he he I, I say no to go to the derby. I gotta I gotta tip my hat to you there, Jose. OK, I really do. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm no, no. I, I think this is worth mentioning. First off, let me clarify something. That was the year of the pandemic with, with COVID. So the races will run a little out of order. That's why the Haskell was run before the Derby. Yeah. It's not like we're making a mistake and people are going to say, what are they talking about? The Haskell's after the Derby. No, no, no. This was the pandemic year and everything was out. Yeah. of order. OK, but I got to hand it to you and I, and I, and I got to give you a salute here because. Ninety nine out of 100 people okay, have a shot to run in the Derby and they take the shot just because they want to run in the Derby, whether they got a chance to win or not, you know, and I've always said, I've never, I've had a couple of, of, of I had a, quite a few claiming horses back in the day. I never had a stake horse. Um, and I've always said that if I ever had a horse that was, you know, qualified to run in the Derby, I wouldn't run just to run. If I didn't believe in my heart I was going to win or had a big shot to win, I don't want to run just to run. You know what I mean? I want to. I got out of the claiming game because I said, you know what? If I'm going to be in this game and I can't compete on the Derby and Breeders' Cup level, I don't want to play. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I couldn't do that, so I got out of it. So huge amount of respect for making that call because 99 out of 100 people would have just said run and the heck with it and you and i both know sometimes you do that and the horse surprises you and wins anyway but most of the time especially if you're a horseman like yourself they don't uh so i really i could see where you train where your owner was taken back but i gotta say you know congrats and and, and that was a that was a gutsy good call and thank you it paid off for the horse and it's not a call and I'm not just blowing smoke at you. It's not a call that a lot of guys would have made. A lot of guys would have run. So you did what was best for the horse and what you thought was the right call, even though it was probably not the popular call. And I, I think that's that's commendable. So that that, that, that gets okay. a, big, a big a big high five from me um, for making that call. Uh, second in the Breeders' Cup mile. How was that? that? I mean, two ways to look at that. Yeah, I run second. That's huge. You know, with a horse that was running for a tag when I got him, the owner tells me running for 16. Now I'm second. But to come close to winning it, that's got to be like, oh, man, I was second. I, you know, what was that like coming second so close to winning the, uh, uh, your first Breeders' Cup race? Uh, yes, that that's why I, I, I told before, like, on the Breeders' Cup, I like the horse to win, too. <laughs> So I don't care if it's 62 to one. I say, hey, the horse is gonna win today. So he was he was unlucky on this race on the rears and the Pegasus because Nick's go along in front. You know, I need like right. a, a Naral or, or a authentic a horse from Buffer <laughs> fighting right. fighting in front. But I 
you know, I am like like terrible loser. I, I don't like to lose race. So <laughs> I was bad this day. Why don't, we don't we very happy about the world, but you know, always when when sometimes you know the the some owners make you move put the horse on on not the perfect spot for the horse, but always when I pick a spot, I am sure that <laughs> that we're gonna win. So a uh, little you know frustrate like we can we running all these races good good but you know we we want to win there right 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 now uh i mean great 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 job with that horse has that been helpful to you i mean how many how many horses do you have now yes now we have 52 horses at palmeros um okay. i started moving some horses to jersey to momot um, yes, the the horse. I always all that that my victories and winner and winners here. Like I owe it to him, to Jesus team, because he put me on the map. He he led to me knows uh, owner people. Uh, you know, for me, when when I start to to move to each track, I learn all with him. Like hey, you have to make the license. Uh, this for this track. This for this track. Like. I learned all with him. Really? Um, now I can I can chip horse. I move. That was my last year. Uh, we won a lot of races over there, uh, not here in Miami. Um, I learned all with him, moving the horses, the times. Um, I learned a lot from from trainers. They they had you know, my pig helped me when I I met him at the Prisness, and when I arrived to Kingland, he. he Helped to me a lot. I meet Buffer. He gave me. He gave to me a lot of, of advice and and good good advice for me. Chad Brown too. So you know, come call and they help me. They hey Jose, do that. Uh, call call this guy because all for me is new because I, I I come from Venezuela. So you know, it when you go out from your track, all is new for you. Is right. the same, but you have to meet the people too. The ice machine, the hay, all the things. Were, 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 were people at these other tracks? I know the trainers you mentioned, Chad Brown, Bob Baffert, they, they help you. Were, were the racetrack management people receptive and helpful to a guy shipping in and what to do? Or was that a difficult process? Yes. Uh, all the here, the people at the, the, uh, that help to you uh, when you move the horse are very, very good people. Most. Uh, most likely when you have good horse, when these big races are different, all the people are advocate to, to the good horses. But Jesus thing, um, have to mention uh, my friend Chad Sommer helped me uh, a lot when, because I, I, don't, I don't know where the license <laughs> stayed, you, you know, to each state. And, right. and hey, the, the time with the, for me, changed to, uh, Put the, the blankets or the, or, uh, to the horse uh, because change the temperature, okay? The weather conditions. Right. So Chad and I uh, putting the blanket to Jesus team like 10 in the time, like 2 a.m. He by, by himself, hey, Jose, <laughs> you forget to do that. Today change the, oh, I, in Venezuela don't happen that, you know? Right, so, right. hey, it is what crazy stories, but, but good. Good learns for me. R R racing is a super competitive game wherever yeah. you go. Okay, wherever you go in the world, anywhere. Is it more competitive in the United States or in Venezuela? I think here because okay. first thing is like like hey, the competitive the competitive I think is in all the places in all the world because you. You are you are here because you want to win. You don't want to arrive second or compete. You want to win. Um, if the gate have four 14 post position, 14 guys wants to win the race. The the all the groom, the owner, the trainer, all the team, the bet. So, but here, change a little bit because in Venezuela, for example, you have you have just a big track. Um, the weather is the same, the conditions is the same, but here you have to train and, and, and get all the details to can compete at the top level, like cheap time, like 
uh, feed time, like move the horse and change the place, and your horse have to have to be good to to the, the change because all I remember one day at, at the Britness, uh, Jesus team don't like don't like the pony. Uh, he always went to the to the track with pony, okay. Um, one day the the pony rider the, uh, on Pilico changed the pony and he don't want to go with the pony. And when you see the big trainers when move the big horse move with the pony too sometimes. So I am learning, learning, and and, and try to 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 get all the good info when I have the my, my next time there, my next storm do my my best possible to to win the race. Right. Now, Jesus' team took you to the Dubai World Cup, okay? Yeah. <laughs> what, what was that like as an experience? I've always heard that it's like literally when you're a horse, horse, horseman and, or an owner or a trainer and you have a horse in the Dubai World Cup, you're literally treated like royalty when you get there and, and, and the horses are too. It's like just a, an unbelievable experience from from the paddock to the stalls to everything. Is that really how it is? What, what is it like when you ship in with a horse for the Dubai World Cup? Hey, for me, one they, of, First off, do they pay for everything? They pay for your flight, put you in a hotel, everything, all of that stuff? They, they, yes, they pay for everything and, and they treat you like, like <laughs> some, someone important. People like chauffeur and Range Rovers, new for you. Um, right. Also, you know, restaurants, for me, it was a unbelievable experience there. So, hey, I don't know yet why why my horse not run uh, a huge race because he was perfect there. Uh, he ran without Lasix and he no bleed, so like he no run, you know. So a little frustrated, like, hey, I have to to come back there and and, and run because this is thing now 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 how how try. Uh, Take good trips, travels because I travel with him. I travel with him all USA, and, and he likes the track. He like I train him under the lights to because first first time to run at night, and you know he runs six. So um, we don't you know, have hey, to Jose. I got to tell you, you, you know, as as a student of the game, I'm not a trainer. I'm not a horseman, but as a student of the game, I followed it for a long, long time. And I like to bet as a better, I could tell you this, there are, there are certain horses and I don't know that anybody could put their finger on it, but there are certain horses that just don't handle that trip to the desert well. And when they come back, some of them take a long time to become the same like they were. And some of them never do. Some of them just, you know what? They just never get back to that level before they went. I've always said that as exciting as it would be to run in the Dubai World Cup, I don't know that I would go unless I, I really had a horse I was sure could handle that trip. And I know today the shipping is, 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 is like state of the art. I mean, I, you look at the Coolmore operation, the Valley Doyle operation, they ship horses better than most people flock. Yes. You know? um, I just don't know that. I, I mean, just some horses just don't take to that desert trip and running without Lasix in the desert, uh, it's it's a it's a big ask for a horse, I think. It really yeah. is. It's hard. I know mm -hmm. it. Good experience, but hard. You know, um, Jesus come Jesus come back good, but the problem was he started to to suffer a little bit at the at the ankle at no big deal. After running Saratoga, we went to Roots and Real to a minor surgery. Right. But after after that, the horse go to went to rest to Winstar. Okay. And he, he almost died because he got salmonella and oh. colic and he was really, really close to to pass the wire <laughs> to, the, oh. <laughs> to uh, you know, to die. Yeah. So now the horse is good. Start start training good. Um, just, just I hope with him like, like stay alive, you know, not, if he comes or not comes, he, he did that. He, he have to, right. you know, I just giving to him the time and whatever he needs. So he may come back. Yes, yes, because he, he was uh, he's a very healthy horse, very healthy horse. But 
he he took this time because he almost died young. Right. He was really really sick at, at Kentucky. Okay. All yes. Right. Well, I, I I wish him the best. Now, you're on a little vacation right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Un, un, unplanned vacation. Uh, happens to the best of us. It's it it, it it's not as hard in horse racing for that to happen nowadays. What happened with you? You had a, a positive test, correct? Yes, uh, last year in Jersey, uh, I, had, I had two positive of Dantrium, Dantrolem, okay? okay. Dantrolem is a medicine to not tie up, okay? To, help, to prevent the tie up on, uh, especially on the Phillies, okay? okay. Um, you know, uh, the good thing of, I think you have to, Always take the good uh, of all the experience, bad or good. Take the good and, and learn. Uh, the good thing for me is like a class four drugs. It's like you know, no, it's not a clenbuterol or or something prohibited. Okay, uh, because well, it's, a, it's a legal drug, correct? Yes. Legal drug. yes. Okay. Um, the days uh, uh you know, all the I learned all with this team, but. Uh, with the Phillies is different, you know, because you have to, to take care more about the muscles, about the tie up and all the things. So was my Philly ever need a banana? Um, if every state is different, the rules, some days are, are two days, three days, all depends. Uh, for sure was my, or, or mistake uh, to no come good the days. But my fault was, uh, it's my first time with a positive, so you know, don't call the lawyer uh, first and sign the no split sample because I have like a clean record, um, not the legal drop. Um, you know, uh, what's good for me, like I learn now. So you have to be careful about the days and ask and stay sure when you when you split your team, like running horse on Miami, running horse on Jersey, running horse on Coronel Downs, you have to be more careful because it's not you it's your team right. so i learned a lot um just taking the days in the best way that i can with the my dog ah, okay <laughs> <laughs> yes good um, i'm sure they're happy about it right yeah <laughs> yes right. unlimited unlimited go out so right he's happy yeah. You know, one of the things that a, a lot of trainers have, have have told me this and it's common sense you know, and, and you learned it with, with, with Jesus' team. You know, you go to different racetracks. There's different rules at yes, all but, different but racetracks. Right. Hey, I took the books and you see, hey, but, uh, because the pre-race change. You know, some place you can give but, some place more, uh, <clears throat> two days. Uh, hey, it's different every, every, when to Dubai, for example, like I learned a book to not make a mistake. Right. And for sure, with the bed, hey, doctor, please, can you... Uh, take care about that and all the things. So it's you have to to see because some some things is oral is by you. So have to to be t careful. Do you think that racing in general, the end the sport of horse racing, okay, would have less positive tests of legal therapeutic medications, okay, uh, if we had one set of rules for all the racetracks that every trainer had to get a copy of, a book that they had to read, sign off that they read it, and it was one set of rules for all the racetracks across the country. Would that be a big help to the sport? Mm, hey, yo, I think I, I am, you know, I am nobody to, to like a, a big statement about to rules or no rules about about the just thing like hey uh, I can complain because my my horse running good uh, everywhere so hey ju just you have to be careful um, and call your doctor and your bed and say you know hey take care of that and try to if they say seven days they do that eight days or give that nine days to to prevent because. All the system of these horses are are different, but it's hard here because the gastro guard, you know, the gastro guard, for example, 
gastrular is for the stomach, okay? For the ulcers and, and helps a lot, but and I learned that with this too. So you can't give gastrogar the day of the race. You, okay. You're gonna be positive. So, uh, and one day I asked, hey, why, why can't the people, why the gastrogar is positive? And I think the doctor, hey, Jose, because the gastrogar maybe mask and other things. Ah, okay, good. So that's why I say I am nobody to say maybe you know right. more sensitive or less sensitive the test because all have like explanation. Okay, when you ask, so just just the trainers we have to be careful and read the books and take more days because hey, believe me, the horse when you train a horse good and your horse are happy and feeling good and sleep good, they're gonna run big. Just you have to be your horse happy. If your horse not happy, you lose. Absolutely, absolutely. So let me ask you, where, 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 where are we going to find the next Jesus team? Oh, well, I think, I think one guy find last like two weeks ago. Okay, on, on Kentucky, the Sony <laughs> Leon horse, <laughs> very close and uh, Kentucky Derby. He, he did, he did, he yeah. did. He found him. He, I think he found. He found him. One, what, one of the things I spoke about, and you, you see, this is going to be an interesting question because you you're involved in claiming horses and you're involved in competing in stake races. Okay, all over the world you competed. Now, now, now you're a player on a big stage. You competed all you know the Preakness, the Dubai <laughs> World Cup, the Pegasus. Now we could have this conversation. You're not a claiming guy, you know. <laughs> Um, you're on the board in the Preakness. You're second in the Breeders' Cup. How? I, I mean, and 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 I don't mean anything bad against against the trainer because I know this could happen to anybody. But if you lose a horse for thirty thousand, that wins the Derby, that's a gut punch. I mean, how do you get over that? You know, I mean, it's easy if you're the guy that claimed them. You know, you look like like yes. a star. But you lose a horse like like when you ran. Jesus team for 25, okay, or 30, whatever it was. If somebody took them and wound up winning the Breeders' Cup, oh, what a gut punch. How do you get over that as a trainer? Hey, John, you know something? This, this, I always say this sport is for men, you know, like it's hard, you know. Not so for the faint of heart, it, I always it's say. hard, hard. You have to, don't care if you are girl or boys, it's hard. You have to, to, to be hard, okay. At the, you have to be hard at the track. So these things can happen to the best trainer of the world. Why? Because I'm gonna explain something to you. Jesus team. I am sure, one hundred percent sure, if I run Jesus team at the Kentucky Derby, he he not gonna he don't gonna ha have the the history that he had. Prior scope, preness. I am I am sure that I gonna lose my horse this day wow. but i think he has started to change when i put him for 25000 why because you start to to build to build to make the heart of the horse uh, on the right spot where the horse get the confidence when the horse for example this horse rich rich strike if you see the paper they start running a uh, turf turf because the king eyes I, I had a king eyes and, and they show good on the tapira and the torque and the horse ran bad. So maybe he say, hey, I'm going to put the horse for Terry. Nobody going to talk him because he ran terrible. And, you know, after I opened the condition, the starters, the starter 30,000, all the good things to make a good horse and just that. And hey, someone take the horse, you know, the guy get the homework done. So it's hard, but you have to do. For example, maybe if this day this trainer put the horse on made a special way at Churchill down this day, gonna run against horse from the Czech Mohammed and the horse from big stools, the big owners, you know, from Chad Brown Buffer this day, their Brad Cox, and the horse finished for maybe the history changed too, you know. Right. So I think. Um, um believe me, the the trainer before uh, deserve like uh, uh, a congratulation about the the work with the horse because he put the horse on the right spot when the horse get the confidence and won't you know 
it's hard, but is it true? It's I'm not very, about improve or not improve. The horses are improving at this time, you know? I'm glad you said that because I've always thought that that's, that's an important point, confidence in, 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 in a race. Yeah. So a lot of times as, as a better, okay, as a gambler, I'm looking at a horse's form and I say to myself, you know, this trainer keeps running this horse in all these spots. I think, I wish, I think it would be better. And again, I'm not a trainer, so I'm only going by my observation. I'm like, I think this horse would do better if they moved him back into an allowance or an optional claiming race where he can win, get his confidence back, and then put him back in the deeper waters. And I'll give you an example, like the best fight managers, boxing managers, okay? They bring a fighter along slowly. They don't, you know, you could win your first five, six fights all by knockout. And, you know, everybody wants to see you fight the champion, but your manager knows you're not ready to fight the champion. You need a few more easy fights to win to get that confidence. You want to go in confident. Um, and what I'm getting from you is it's 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 similar. And I've always believed it with a race horse. Believe me. You want a confident horse, a horse that, hey, I won. I know how to win. And, you know, they go into their next race with that that swagger, that confidence, as opposed to a horse who's used to getting beat. They don't have that that confidence. Yes, yes that, that is the same with the horse. Or is that when you saw a horse running heights, running heights, and the day after like five races, the guy dropped the horse. And you say, hey, the horse gonna win today easy. And the horse lose. Hey, right. the horse, the, the heart broke, you know? Exactly. Uh, uh, or maybe it's late, you know? So it's hard, but you always have to, to, to make the heart of the horse. The horse get confidence and improving and all by step by step is the most important. Right. Do you yeah. have any horses in your barn now? And I'm not gonna ask you who they are, but do you have any horses in the barn now that you're excited about, that you're looking forward to, that you think have uh, some stakes potential? Yeah, yes, uh, like, like this year was good for me because uh, I get one from the, one really good feeling name at Hitler Hunter that won the state, the Captiva Island at, at Goldstream Park. I know, at Goldstream Park, I know that that she don't gonna be like a Breer's Cup, but you know, she she's a good feeling. Uh, my horse that the uh, one under my uh, uh, classic state of mind that I, I went to Kingland uh, last month and won Saturday with my uh, with my fire at, at Goldstream Park Classic. So it's a really nice uh, nice horse. Um, the babies arrived this this year. Uh, last year I don't get babies, you know, so because I don't get owners. So now I am receiving some babies that looking real real good. So, you know, I think now I have like hopes to, to stay there again. Do you have, are you going to get the Saratoga condition book for some of those maiden special weight races? Might we see one of those horses up at Saratoga? Everybody yes. wants to win a maiden race at this spot. Yes, yes. I, I am trying to, to, to make a selection, like two or three horses to, uh, to stay there and okay. win the herd. Okay. Um, hey, I, I don't want to take up more of your time. I think we got, this was a great conversation. I enjoyed it. I could talk with you all day. You're a, a really good guy. But here's the best thing that I got out of this that I, I think people should, should take. Here you have a, a young up and coming trainer that could have ran in the Derby. Thank you. They could have run in the Kentucky Derby, but knew it was not best for his horse and knew that it might sour his horse, like we talked about, and take away that confidence and not, you know, wind up not running second in the Breeders' Cup mile, which if not for Nick's go, who we know is a, is a tough horse to beat at a mile when he's on the by himself, you know, might have won the Breeders' Cup. I mean, that, that was a gutsy, good call for, for racing and for the horse. I commend you for that again. I think that's a great takeaway from this conversation. And uh, hey, a pleasure to have you. And, and, and when you get that first graded stake win, we're going to have you back. Thank have you. Have a little fun. Ho hopefully and, uh, soon. <laughs> hopefully soon. But let me tell you, there's a lot of them with your name on it. So don't worry about it. They'll come. Uh, you probably know that already. So thank hey, Jose, you. thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, man. Enjoy the time off. I know it's not the way you wanted it, but hey, it is Florida. The weather's <laughs> fine. Enjoy it. And uh, thank He's you. Ready.
yeah, yeah. Could could be worse. Believe me, could yeah. be worse. I um, know. I'll shut the recording. We'll say goodbye off camera. So uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Ciao for now, Jose D'Angelo, and uh, there's always more coming from Past the Wire and Past the Wire TV. Thank you, Joe. Best to the best and hope for the best. Coma broke well on the outside. And but you don't right. expect to get speed like this. Coma continues to battle on down in the rail. It is Coma who's going to win the Met Mile. Nobody does it better.